Hi everybody, welcome to South Rice at Christian Fellowship and our summer special. What makes it special is that everyone is invited to join us in worship, prayer, learning, hand decorating and the final of the Mark versus Jane composition. If you want to contact us, you can email us at church at srcf.org.uk or go on our website srcf.org.uk for further contact details. So let's begin by talking to Father God in prayer. Eternal God, you are the greatest. You are our creator and our redeemer. You made us and you love us. You did not give up on us when we rebelled against you, but sent Jesus to be our saviour and your Holy Spirit to be our guide. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth, so we invite you into our hearts and minds to transform us so that we are in tune with you. Bless us as we learn together and to, that you know us better than we know ourselves and that you love and care for each one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sometimes we write things that we need to remember on the palms of our hands. And in Isaiah 49, 16 we read, Look, I have written your names on the palms of my hands. So that tells us that God, we know that God loves us. So let's sing together before the throne.
my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of praise. One with Himself, I cannot die. My soul is righteous. Psalm 139. Not difficult to find because it's smack that bang in the middle of the Bible and it's quite a long psalm. So find one, Psalm 139. And what I want you to look out for is four pointers. First one is God knows everything about you. Second one is hide and seek, where you can't be lost from God. The third one is a human biology summary that God has made you. And the fourth one is is a spiritual MOT. You got that? God knows you can't be lost from God. God made you and a spiritual MOT. Okay. So Psalm 139 begins like this. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I le flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Surely, I said, if the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, but even the darkness will not be dark, d dark to you, and the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God, 
Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139 begins with, O oh Lord, you know me. And we're going to make a poster to illustrate just exactly that fact. If you haven't got a printed hand, you can draw a hand by drawing round. So let's start by writing those words. I'm going to write across the top here. Oh Lord, you know me. And that comes from Psalm 139 and verse 1. God says that he knows our name. So I'm going to write my name. I'm not going to change colour. I'm going to write my name in the middle of this hand. In fact, in Isaiah, God says, I have written your name on the palm of my hand. That's how precious we are to him. Not only does he know our names, but he knows all about us. So I'm going to write some things that I can do or I enjoy doing because he gives us our own gifts and abilities and they're not the same as everyone else's. So the things that I really like doing are these. I like spending time with my grandchildren. So I'm going to write that on here. Spending time with my grandchildren. Ooh, it's going to be a squash to fit it in. Never mind. There we go. I like knitting and sewing. Knitting and sewing. There we go. I like reading too. Ooh, there we are. Reading. I like teaching, especially like today, teaching about Jesus. And one thing that you might not know about me is I also like going Scottish dancing. My club is not running at the moment because of the virus, but I'm looking forward to being back at it. So that's about me, but yours will be completely different because you are completely different too. Later on in this psalm, it talks about God knows our going out and our coming in. Maybe you went on holiday through this summer. I went on holiday in a car. Right, this is where, you know I'm not very good at drawing, but this is where I'm gonna try and draw a car. There we are, something like that. I went on holiday in a car. Maybe you went on holiday in a plane. I don't know whether I can draw a plane. Let's see if I can. If you do one of these, I'd love to see it because I think your drawing will be much better than mine. But anyway, you get the idea. There we are. Or maybe you stayed at home and had fun at home instead. But what the psalm says is that God knows. He knows when we go out, when we come in. So he knows about going back to school. 
and he's going to be with us every moment of the time there's nowhere we can go where god is not there he even knows when we go to bed I don't know whether I can draw a bed, let's see if I can. He even knows when we go to bed and when we get up again. That's how much he knows us. Isn't that great? The next two songs are chosen to encourage us to worship Jesus because we are designed to do just that, worship him. The first you may not know. The refrain, refrain says, my voice was made to praise you, my heart was made to love. I want to be the person you designed. I know that you are with me no matter where I go, and I'm carrying your image all the time. The second is more familiar, it's the butterfly song, where we celebrate as God has made us, us, unique and special. <laughs>
idea that God knows everything about us is quite scary. I mean, everything? Your thoughts and your dreams, all your secrets, the lot. But at the same time, it's a great comfort. God knows the real me and he still loves me. That is amazing. He's not going to change his mind about me just because I blew it. He loves me, knowing all the bad things I think and do. Way back in the 1980s, Cliff Richard wrote a song based on these verses. The refrain is, you know me better than I know myself, better than I know myself. Time after time, you've shown it to be true that no one loves me like you. It's on YouTube if you want to listen to it all. God loves you better than anyone else because he knows you through and through and still loves you. Second point is you can't be lost from God. The psalmist basically says you can play hide and seek with God, but he will always find you. No one is ever beyond the range of God's love. You can run away from God, but he's always there waiting for you to return to him. And that is where God knowing is important. You can't fool him. So be honest with God. Admit your sin and turn away from it. Instead of wasting your energy trying to hide, run towards him. The prodigal son did just that when he came to his senses and he went back to his father. And as he was met by his father, running to meet him. Because God is always waiting to forgive and restore you. Just you need to turn to him and he's there. God made you. I have a really interesting book called The Body by Bill Bryson. It goes into great detail on how the body works and is full of fascinating information. But Bill Bryson doesn't believe in God, so he misses the main point. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not an accident, but a specific creation of a loving, caring God. Remember that when you were bombarded with Mother Nature and evolution on TV as, you, as, as if they decide how you're made up, that's not true. God made you special and unique, and God loves you. If you read through the psalm, verses 19 to 22 seem quite out of place. I think the psalmist is so passionate about God that he expresses his frustration with people who try to leave God out. They forget God knows you. They pretend you can hide from God. They ignore the God who created them. The psalm ends with what I call a spiritual MOT. An MOT is a checkup each year for that a car is safe to drive. Here, the psalmist asks God to check him up. And the checkup is about feelings, thoughts and actions. So a good place to start with though, that is the fruits of the spirit we looked at last month. Can you remember them? There was love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And you can check out your actions against the Ten Commandments. They're in Exodus 20. But remember, the point of the checkup is to head to the life everlasting, to ask God to transform you into the person that one day you will be when you get to heaven. So there you have it. Psalm 139 is about the fact that God knows all about you. You can't hide from him, so instead turn to him and let him show you the way. You are special because God created you to be you and to know his love and to respond to it in repentance of faith. So we ask God to give us a spiritual MOT. The objective is to prepare us for heaven where we will enjoy him forever. In the meantime, we seek to live as citizens of the kingdom of God in our daily lives. Next up, we go over to the Lewington House as James and Mark face the final channel challenge for this summer. Are you ready? Hi, everyone. Here we are for the final round of James versus Mark. You right, James? Yeah, I'm good. Hello, everyone. You right, Mark? Yeah, I feel very confident. 
Okay, so as you all know, we've got to this stage in the series where it's two all. So whoever wins this round of pool will be the champion this summer of James versus Mark. Okay, so when you're ready, lads. Okay, sorry everyone, I meant to say pick your winner. So you're going to pick James or you're going to pick Mark. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, so Mark breaks off. Anything in off the break? No. Okay, so James is shot. Okay, no for James either. So still either <laughs> reds or yellows. Okay, so Mark's now yellows. So he has to clear all the yellows up and then put the black. Easy as that. <laughs> Not always easy. <laughs> Oh, unlucky. Okay, so now it's James's shot and James's reds. Oh, unlucky. Okay, Mark's shot again. Nice. Oh, unlucky, Mark. Okay, so now James is shot on the reds. Oh, unlucky. So because James potted a yellow, Mark now gets two shots. So two shots to Mark. Oh, and it's rolled back over the middle pocket. Bit of roll on that table there. Oh, and he doubles it in the corner. <laughs> Was that a trick shot there, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to James now. Difficult position here. Okay, like it. Okay, Mark, you'll go. Yellow still. Okay, Mark trying to double here. Oh, unlucky. Okay, so now over to James on the reds. Oh, unlucky. He's a bit hard there. Oh, and one's rolled in. Okay, well done. Okay, good one. So James getting the swing of things now. Making it a closer game. Oh, a bit of a trick shot there. Okay, so you can double it in the middle. No, cut in. Oh, well done. Good shot. Oh, fantastic double. Oh, well played. So James <laughs> comes from behind on fire to win James versus Mark. Okay, everyone, we hope you've had a lovely summer. We hope you've enjoyed our James versus Mark sessions. So for 2020, James is the champion. I'm sure Mark will be back in 2021 to try and make a difference. All right, let's say goodbye then. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Well, our final song reverses the idea of God knowing us and is a prayer that we know God. It begins, all I once held dear. All I once held dear, built my life upon. All this world reveres and wars to all. All I once thought. Oh my.
move on to celebrations and we have four birthdays. Joyce is on Monday, Michelle is on Wednesday, Paul is on Thursday and Sylvia is on Sunday. In addition Andrew and Sylvia as well celebrate their wedding anniversary on Sunday. So congratulations to everybody and we wish you a very happy birthday, wedding anniversary or whatever you're celebrating. And if we've missed you out do tell us and we'll uh, try and keep in track of that. We now come to matters for praise and prayer. Gail says, I praise God for providing a short but much needed break away for my son and wife and mayor. It's the first time in 16 months they have been away from home, apart from hospitals. Please pray that mayor doesn't experience any spikes in her temperature while they are away. Our God is an awesome God and I am thankful. Jean Peters writes, Thankfully, the diverticulitis has cleared, and this past week I've been eating normally, so now I need to exercise to get my muscles back and some weight on. Please continue to pray for a buyer for Lizzie's house and for Richard to clear out his belongings. Thank you. Anne says, Thanksgiving to God for his constant love and kindness and so grateful for all your prayers. My brother Paul is getting his strength back and with the help of physiotherapist is walking again. He is hoping to be home from hospital in a couple of days. We need to chat, pray for children returning to school um, for the first time sometime, some of them since March. And we want to continue to pray for Anthony, Paul Josie's friend. He's still in a bad state, but he is improving and he is communicating with others. Please continue to pray for a miraculous recovery. And we need to can remember to pray for our key workers. Uh, this last Friday, the leadership team met at, and to discuss meeting on the Dean Avenue prem premises. So continue to pray for wisdom over the decisions that are made. These items will be on the prayer bulletin with others you, if you send them to me before noon on Sunday the 6th of September. But let's pray for these items now. Eternal Father, we just want to worship you. We want to praise your name. We want to declare that you are the greatest. You are the most wonderful person there is. And that's why we come to you with our praise and our petition because we know that you are a God who cares for each and every one of us and you want to pour out your blessings on your people. We thank you for providing Gail's family with their, their short break and amazing that they've been able to do that. And we just pray that Maya will be kept in good health and that they'll have a really good time again, a really valuable time and feel something really special there. We praise you, Father because you are the awesome God. And we just thank you that Jean Peters' diverticulitis has cleared up. And we pray for her to um, gain strength and uh, weight as she recovers from being ill. And that we pray that you will put, guard her from any infection or any further um, problems. We pray for a buyer for Liz Creasy's house and that Richard will cope with packing up his belongings and moving on. We join Anne in giving thanks to you for your constant love and kindness. And we pray, continue to pray for Paul, and we thank you that he's getting his strength back, and that he's beginning to walk, and we look forward to hearing that he's out of hospital, and recognise that you are the one who heals. 
And Father, we want to pray for the children in our fellowship returning to school. We pray that you will bless them, that they will um, cope with the um, tension of the novelty of going back into a new class, some a new school, but most importantly, um, a different environment and new rules and regulations and new um, restrictions on their, their happening. We pray that they will settle down into a routine very quickly and that they will benefit from their education. And we pray most of all that you will protect them from um, further infection and that this will not be cause an outbreak of COVID-19 in our community. And we pray for Anthony, Paul Yossi's friend. Father, we know that he's still in a very bad way, but we thank you for answered prayer that he is improving. And we pray, Lord, that you will miraculously heal him and you will restore um, some, uh, his, him and help him to cope with the emotional tra trauma of having lost his legs. And Father, we just pray that you will pour your blessing onto this family and that they will know that you are the one who cared for them. And we continue to pray for our key workers. Father, we just pray that you will keep them and sustain them. We pray for Gabriella, Mary, Sam, Takeshaw, Winnie and their families, that you will guard their ways and bless them. Help them to have that smile and encouragement for each and every person that they meet. And we pray about the leadership team meeting last Friday. And we pray that the decisions that were made there, that we can um, do things together. And we just pray for wisdom in what we do and how we go about it. There are so many things that we could or could can't do. And finding a way through the maze is a matter we lift to you. We praise you that you know us all. You created us, so we commit ourselves to you, our bodies, mind and spirit, that you may transform us into the people fit for heaven, able to show your love to a needy world. Bless each and every one of us by your Holy Spirit, hour by hour. In Jesus' name, Amen. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To our only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. A few notices to finish with. First of all, there is a quiz night planned for this Sunday evening. If you don't get a message, ring, text or email Darren. Don't try and communicate with me because I'm actually speaking at Waterloo Road at that time. Obviously, we will need to keep you informed about next week's service. So if you haven't heard by midweek, again, ask. It's a relatively straightforward thing. But you need to f find out what's going on. Darren's email, pastor at srcf.org.uk, is back in action again, so you can use that. Remember that Darren is self-isolating this week, so ring, text, WhatsApp, email him, but he won't be allowed out to play, oh, to work. So there it is. We've been blessed by hearing God tell us that he loves us. Let's enjoy it for the rest of this week.